I'm Darcy Crow, Senior Wealth Advisor at CG Wealth Management. We have seen a drastic surge in demand for Guaranteed Investment Certificates, or GICs, in recent months, as more favorable rates have become available. In fact, while rates have come down slightly from peaks reached earlier this year, rates on GICs have reached levels not seen in over 15 years, so it's not surprising that we're being frequently asked by clients if they should be considering GICs as a meaningful asset allocation within their portfolios. To give you an idea of the drastic change in rates that are offered, at the start of 2022, one-year GIC rates were in the range of just 1%. Fast forward to May 2023, and one-year GIC rates for the large Canadian banks are currently around 4.6%. This is a significant increase in the interest rate available in a relatively short time period. So today we're going to explore what is a GIC, how do they work, and what are some of the pros and cons of GICs that you should be taking into account? This information should provide you a good sense of whether or not GICs make sense for you. So what are GICs? GICs are investment products issued by institutions such as banks, trust companies, and credit unions. Essentially, you are loaning that institution a sum of money for a specified time period, which is referred to as the term of the GIC. And in return, the institution pays you a specified rate of interest and returns your original investment on the stated maturity date. Typically, we see GICs range from one to five years in term. You can hold a GIC in a registered account, such as an RRSP, TFSA, or RIF, or a non-registered account. So now let's discuss what are the key advantages of GICs. So first of all, as the name suggests, they are guaranteed. GICs are considered to be safe investment tools for investors who do not want to take on risk with their money. Secondly is protection. GICs are insured up to $100,000 by the Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation or CDIC and are generally considered to be of high credit quality. CDIC is a federal crown corporation that protects more than $1 trillion in Canadian deposits. Coverage is free and it's automatic for those eligible deposits. In addition, both your principal and interest are guaranteed, not just your invested amount. One note that you'll want to keep in mind on insurance, GICs from banks and trust companies are insured through CDIC up to $100,000. However, GICs from credit unions are insured provincially. So it's really important to understand the insurance coverage based on the issuer of the GIC you are considering to determine if that insurance is going to be covered federally or provincially. And three is decreased volatility. While stocks and bonds can be volatile and see price increases and decreases, GICs do not change in value. They are insulated from market ups and downs and therefore can be attractive to those investors that have low risk tolerance and prefer to avoid market volatility. Now let's review what are the key disadvantages of GICs. So first of all is limited liquidity. Outside of cashable or redeemable GICs, most other GICs are non-redeemable. They must be held to maturity date and cannot be sold, redeemed, or transferred prior to maturity. So you need to ensure that you will not require the funds prior to maturity date as they will not be accessible to you. If you want to have liquidity within a GIC, there are cashable GICs available, such as 30-day or 90-day cashable GICs. However, you won't get the same rate as a standard non-redeemable GIC, given that they're providing additional liquidity to you. In fact, currently, we're receiving higher rates on high-interest daily savings rather than uh, these GICs, which may be 30-day cashable GICs. So the second con is higher tax rates. The full return from GICs is interest income, which is fully taxable in the year the income is received. So unlike capital gains and dividends, which have more favorable taxation, interest income is subject to the highest tax rates, impacting your total return net of taxes. And three, in general, GICs have lower returns than other investment alternatives. Given their guaranteed nature, GICs typically offer low returns, especially after accounting for taxes. In addition, if you're looking at real returns, which is your return net of inflation, the net real returns can be very low or even negative as we are seeing currently.
Canada's inflation rate cooled to 4.3% in March after peaking at 8.1% in summer of 2022. Comparing this to a one-year GIC rate of 4.6% today, you can see that the net of tax and inflation, you're receiving a net negative real return on your money. It goes without saying, a negative net real return, you will result in a significant decrease in the purchasing power of your wealth over time. Now, I want to take a quick moment to speak about both interest rate and term on GIC, as these are two very important factors if you are considering to invest in a GIC. In a normal upward sloping yield curve environment, you'll typically be rewarded with a higher interest rate for the longer the term you lock in your money for. For example, a one-year GIC would have a lower interest rate than a five-year GIC. In contrast, we are currently in an inverted yield curve environment with expectations that interest rates will come down in years to come. Given this yield curve inversion, the interest rate currently paid on a one-year GIC is actually higher than that of a five-year GIC. To highlight this point with current rates, today a one-year GIC will pay approximately 4.6%, whereas a five-year GIC will pay approximately 4.0% through major Canadian banks. So your annual interest is less by locking in for a longer period of time, given that expectation for rates to come down in future years. You will also want to be keenly aware of auto renewal GICs. This means that your GIC will be automatically renewed upon maturing, meaning your funds will be locked in for another term. We typically recommend not to have GICs auto renewed. You wanna take the opportunity to review your circumstances at the time of maturity, as well as the interest rates available to ensure that purchasing a new GIC is the right choice for you at that time. So given all of this information, should you be considering a GIC? In our view, GICs can be a very solid investment tool for funds that you know you will be making use of in the shorter term. If you have a large upcoming purchase, for example, in one year time, and you want to ensure that you have the full amount guaranteed for that date, in that instance, a one year GIC is likely a very good consideration. However, if you are investing for the long term to fund your retirement years, for example, we highly recommend that you look to a diversified portfolio of high quality stocks, fixed income securities and exchange traded funds, which have a track record of vastly outperforming GICs in the long term and remaining ahead of inflation, despite the fact that they do come with greater volatility. If you are looking to support your retirement, for example, this could be 20 or 30 years you are planning for. It is critical to ensure that your returns are ahead of inflation or you will see a significant erosion in the buying power of your retirement funds over time. In closing, while the principal protection and insulation from market volatility make GICs attractive to some investors, there are many other considerations to take into account in determining if you should be considering investing in a GIC. You will want to take into consideration your individual circumstances, goals, time horizon, and risk tolerance in determining if a GIC is right for you. Thank you for joining us today. It would be greatly appreciated if you can take a moment to subscribe and like this video as it helps us get the content out to those who need it most. Thank you.